Hello, my name is Beth Morgan. I'm a Hanover artist and teacher. And for the past year, I've been painting on watercolor paper and mounting it on a wood frame. Very similar to this. So I took the old canvas off and I started with just a wood frame. And what's nice about this is that when you finish your painting, no glass is needed. I just mounted onto this shadow box frame. This is one I did yesterday. And I easily attached it just with Velcro on the back side. How did I do this? That's what I'm going to be showing you now. Starting with paper, I use either Archer's 140 cold press paper or Stonehenge cold press 140. So before I begin, I just want to tell you how I protected this. I used Cryon UV Archival Varnish Spray. I started with the semi-gloss first. I sprayed it. Then I used a matte finish, sprayed it. I get, of course, you're drying it between your sprays. Going back to your semi-gloss and then finishing off with your mat. So this is really well protected for UV uh, light as well as some just very lightly stained on top. And I can touch my hand on it so it's protect my original painting. Now to the fun part. Okay, so we have our wood frame. First of all, what I like to do is just decide where my corners is going to be. So what I've done, just put it on this side. I've got it drawn. And I just use a small ruler and make a line like this. A line like this. And then I decide where, where it meets here. Just a little tick here and a little tick here. And I just want to take some of the corners off to have a more tighter corners. Just like so. So we're going to take this little corner off all the way around. Okay. So I've got my corners cut, and now at this point, I just do a very quick My pencil line tells me where to stop. So what I'm using right now is a Stonehenge 140 cold press. I've used Archer's and Archer's works terrific too. Okay, so I've got it all lined up, ready to go. Now we have to wet our paper. We don't have to soak it on the bathtub. Just make sure your area is nice and clean. And I just want to use just a regular paper towel. Let me just give it nice and soak here. Just give it a nice soaking there. You don't have to spend so much time wetting it this way. Okay, now one side is all finished. Flip it around. Of course, if you've got a, a special size that has been embossed, um, I know archers have the embossment, and I usually look, make sure that the embossed is in the front when I'm doing this. Stonehenge doesn't have the embossing, so I just kind of resume both sides. It's just fine. Nice and soaked. Flip it over. Ready to go. One more little soak. There we are. Okay. Now, the fun part. So, I usually look for that groove um, on the wood frame and just kind of make sure it's face down. And I kind of match my corners. And we're going to staple this, the long side first. Probably three. It's fine for now. Now, the corner gets is a little trickier here, so I'm going to flip it over here so I can just show you better on the camera. All right. 
Now, this corner gets folded this way. And I do a nice crease, just like that. And then I fold it nice and tight, but it'll give it a stable here. Okay, so that's my first corner. And I'm going to flip over this side. See if the camera can see this a little bit better. Just like so. Give it a little tuck. And fold it again. Just like so. Turn it around. Yeah. Now, at this point, I just gently stretch the paper. So again, fold it nice, nice and flush there. Give it a nice tight fold. Staple it. Okay, now at this point, then actually you can fold it over this way. So I usually just kind of bend this one just a smidgen, just to give it a nice little overlap here. And then I'm going to get a little, pull the center here. So again, I'm going to just do a kind of a gentle fold, just like that, so I can have a nice little crease there. Like that. Now the other side. Okay, I can fold this one. See how I fold that? Then you can go like that. Give it a little step. Now, I guess I can give it one little staple right down the center. Fold it very gently. I usually kind of try to cover the previous fold. Sometimes it works. Most times it works. Right there. I find that when I paint on stretch watercolor doing this way, um, the colors don't fade as much. It's surprising, you know, the rule that when you put one on wet, um, the colors will fade about 20% lighter in watercolors. I find that they do keep us vibrancy for some reason. It does um, give a nice, uh, vibrant colors. Now, one's done. See how fast that took to stretch? Now, then we let that sit for 24 hours, and it becomes like a drum, just like this one from yesterday. I use industrial strength Velcro to put it on my foil frame. But see, once it's totally dry, you can tap it, and it sounds like a drum, and it's ready to paint. So I hope you enjoy this little quick video and uh, make your own watercolor paper stretch on wood frames.